Welcome to Brunswick Beat. Brunswick County's only television news show brought to you by the Brunswick Beacon. I'm Rachel Johnson. And I'm Stacey Manning. Bex, a 72-year-old landmark restaurant in Calabash, has burned. It caught fire Monday night. The cause is not known. The fire was reported about an hour after the restaurant had closed for the evening. Honey Shore, spokesperson for the Calabash Fire Department, said the entire back of the roof of the restaurant was fully involved when firefighters arrived. Numerous fire departments and emergency units provided mutual aid where firefighters remained all night. Firefighters work to protect the adjacent Grapevine restaurant. Sean Bellamy, co-owner of the restaurant with her brother and sister, said they will rebuild the restaurant as soon as possible. Three wrecks have claimed three lives in Brunswick County in four days. There have been seven fatal wrecks in Brunswick and New Hanover counties in two weeks. Michael Hewitt, 61 of Shalot, was killed in a single vehicle wreck around 8.08 a.m. Saturday, October 20th on Shell Point Road near Graybridge Road. A second single vehicle wreck occurred around 3 a.m. Sunday, October 21st on Stanley Road in Supply. Michael Sullivan, 49 of Supply, was killed. And on Tuesday, October 23rd, a third wreck occurred on North Carolina 133 near Leland that claimed the life of Jessica Jackson, 26 of Southport. Three Brunswick County Commissioner candidates talked about transportation, job creation, and other issues at a recent debate last Wednesday. Scott Phillips, Michael Ballard, and Frank Williams fielded questions as part of the ABC POA Meet the Candidates Night Forum. Also on the same panel was David Rouser, who was running against incumbent Mike McIntyre for U.S. House of Representatives. Their stories are in this week's Beacon. Next week, the Beacon will have more election coverage, including information on candidates for North Carolina House and Senate and the Lieutenant Governor's race. You can also catch a re-airing of the forum on ATMC now through November 5th. Speaking of elections, a steady line of people showed up for early voting when it opened last Thursday morning at the National Guard Armory in Shalot. More than 13,000 people have already voted. Early voting continues from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. weekdays and 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturdays at seven satellite sites and from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays and 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday, November 3rd at the County Elections Office in Bolivia. On Sunday, October 21st, a guest at the Best Western Hotel in Leland fell prey to a telephone hoax. The hoax caused significant property damage, but no injuries. At about 3 a.m., Leland police officers responded to a fire alarm activation call at the hotel. When they arrived, it was discovered an unknown person had called the front desk and asked to be transferred to a room. Then the caller advised the occupant of the room to activate the sprinkler system because there was a gas leak. Leland Police Department detectives believe this prank may be one of many nationwide. They are asking anyone with information to call 371-1100 or leave an anonymous tip by texting 847-411 with your cell phone, then 411-LPD and your tip. The Brunswick County Sheriff's Office is searching for Kenneth Ross Jessup. He was last seen in the Southport area more than a week ago. Jessup, 45, is described as being 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighing about 210 pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. Detectives are searching for him in relation to a felony count of worthless check. He is also wanted for absconding a felony indictment for a similar charge and a contempt of court citation. If you have any information on his whereabouts, please contact Detective Ed Carter at 253 the 32nd annual North Carolina Oyster Festival was a success this past Saturday and Sunday in Ocean Isle Beach. Thousands of people attended the two-day festival to enjoy the festivities. Winners in the annual oyster shucking contest on Saturday were Dorothy Hill of Shalot in the professional competition. Clay Caroon of Oriental was the winner in the amateur competition. Hill, who works for Lloyd Milliken's Oyster House at Shiloh Point, advances on to the National Oyster Shucking Competition next October in Maryland. On Sunday, the oysters do cook off, heated up the festivities. Pelican's Perch claimed the first prize, while the grill came in second, with the Boundary House finishing in third place. Tickets for the cook off sold fast, and hundreds lined up to enjoy. Festival by the Sea will once again light up the last weekend in October in Holden Beach. It kicks off with the Festival by the Sea Parade at 10 a.m. Saturday down the Holden Beach Causeway. This year's parade marshal is Symmetria Ruiz of the Discovery Channel's hit reality TV show Swamp Loggers. Festival hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sunday. There are more than 125 arts and crafts and food vendors, as well as a kids' area scheduled to be set up under the high-rise bridge on the island. Admission and parking are free. There will also be a horseshoe tournament at 11 Saturday and a sand sculpture contest Saturday afternoon on the beach at the Jordan Boulevard Access. Judging starts at 3 p.m. 
Details about the festival's entertainment lineup are in this week's Tide section of the Beacon. Brunswick County's C.C. Martin just returned from recording an album in Nashville and is having his debut performance here in the county on Saturday. Martin is headlining the first Brunswick County Fall Country Music Festival. The event will be in the parking lot at Planet Fun on Saturday. Martin takes the stage at 345, but me music begins at 1 p.m. There are activities and vendors scheduled for the entire day, including an adult and children's Halloween costume contest. Tickets are $5. If purchased in advance, a $5 ticket includes a $10 game pass for Inside Planet Fun. Call 755-2386 for more information. And read more about C.C. Martin and his country music dreams on the front of this week's Beacon, available on newsstands now. Welcome to the Beacon Sports Report. The West Brunswick High School football team will play South Columbus for an unbeaten conference championship Friday night at West. The Trojans, 5-0 in the Waccamaw Conference and 5-4 overall, routed winless West Bladen 41-13 last Friday night. The win clinched a tie for the conference championship. South Brunswick High School junior Ashley Sloop shot a 6 over par 78 and won the Waccamaw Conference Championship Golf Tournament on October 15th at the Members Course of St. James Plantation. Slope also led the Cougars to the team title. West sophomore Cameron Smith finished second. She had five pars on the front nine, including one of the par five first hole. On the back nine, she played her last five holes, one over par. South sophomore Jansen Jones finished in third place. South Brunswick runners finished 1-2 in the Boys Conference Championship cross-country race, but West Brunswick won the team title over the Cougars on October 16th. The race had four teams and 35 runners. The title is West's third in the last four years. South was the defending champion. The top four finishers followed form as sophomore Grant Huffman won the boys' race and sophomore Thomas Eichhorn was second. West had the next two fastest runners, sophomore Gray Cheers and junior Spencer Waters in fourth. Carmen Hilliard completed her high school cross-country conference career by winning a fourth straight championship. In the final Waccamaw Conference meet of the season, Hilliard ran the 3.1-mile course in 20 minutes and 17 seconds. She led her teammates to the conference championship. West Brunswick had four runners finished in the top ten, but that was insufficient to beat the Cougars. South won its fourth straight Waccamaw title. West finished second. Read more about all these stories and see more great photos in this week's sports section of The Beacon. shelter today with Erin Brown with a perfect day photography. Hey, Erin, hey. you're out here a lot, aren't you? Oh yes, all the time. Yes. At least three days a week. Yeah, she comes out here and shoots some fabulous photos of the animals here. So who have you got here today? This is Midnight. He is a black and tan border collie, about 10 months old. He's a very good boy. He knows his basic commands, sit, he can do a high five, he does, he does it all for you. He sure does. I just met him, got acquainted with him, and he knows sit, and he knows how to shake hands and all that good stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. And um, about how old is he? Do we know? He's about 10 months old. 10 months old. He still has some puppy in him. And was he brought here um, as a stray or? An owner surrendered him. So okay. he was in a home. Okay. And, and the owner was no longer able to? Provide care. Okay. All right, then. And so come on out here, and you can meet Midnight and all the other dogs. Oh, yeah. We have plenty of cats and dogs. Okay. So come on out, they're out here on Green Swamp Road and there's plenty of other homeless animals who need a great homes and they're waiting for that great forever home. So come on out. Come on out! A musical version of The Color Purple will be at Odell Williamson Auditorium at 7.30 p.m. Saturday, October 27th and 3 p.m. Sunday, October 28th. Doors open 30 minutes prior to performance times. This stage version of The Color Purple is directed and choreographed by Wilmington-based Kevin Green. 
It's based on the Alice Walker 1983 Pulitzer Prize winning novel about the lives of black women in the 1930s rural Georgia. Tickets are $19 for adults, $17 for students and seniors ages 65 and older, and $9 for children ages 12 and younger. For tickets, call 755-7416 or visit bccowa.com. Celebrate the harvest and Halloween season and help homeless animals at the same time. Southport Oak Island Animal Rescue is having its third annual Harvest Fest from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday, October 27th. Highlights include costumes, trick-or-treat, a silent auction, games and prizes, foods and drinks, a bake sale, a 50-50 raffle, and door prizes. SOAR is at 3376 St. Charles Place off Long Beach Road. For more information, call SOAR at 457-6340. Halloween at the Old Bridge in Sunset Beach will be celebrated from 5 to 7 p.m. Saturday, October 27th. Highlights include children's trunk or treat and a costume contest. Awards will be given for scariest, most creative, and funniest costumes. Other highlights include an apple eating contest, hot dogs, cider, a sweet treat, and music by local artists. Please bring a canned item for Brunswick County Street Reach. The event is organized by the Old Bridge Preservation Society. The Old Bridge is at 109 Shoreline Drive West in Sunset Beach, across from the town's fire station. This Friday, it's time to don a mask and make a difference in Brunswick County. New Hope Clinic is hosting a masquerade ball, and you're invited. From 7 to 10.30 p.m., the Black Tie Optional event will be at 101 Stone Chimney Place in Supply. Tickets for the Black and White Mask Party are $70 per person and are available by calling the clinic at 845-5333 and asking for Sheila Roberts. Tickets are selling fast and the goal is to sell out. Anyone wanting to attend should call before 5 p.m. on Friday to reserve a place. New Hope Clinic is a nonprofit organization providing health care to the poor and uninsured in Brunswick County. Can you survive Grissett Town Longwood Fire and Rescue's annual Haunted Trail for another Halloween season? The upcoming dates for the Scary Trail are October 26th, 27th, 29th, 30th, and 31st. The ghouls and ghosts usually start appearing around 7 p.m. and linger until midnight before disappearing back into the swamp. Tickets are $8 per person with kids 5 and younger admitted free. Fast Pass tickets are available for $15. All proceeds from the Haunted Trail go to support the Grissettown Logwood Fire and Rescue. Call the fire department at 287-3030 for more information. There is something spooky going on at West Brunswick High School, and one group of students is using its talents to get to the bottom of that mystery. The West Brunswick High School Theater Arts and Drama Club is performing Nightmare High School at 7 p.m. Wednesday, October 24th, and at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. on Friday, October 26th in the West Brunswick High School Little Theater. Admission is $3.00. Nightmare High School is a student-directed play and one you don't want to miss. For ticket information, contact Jennifer Negron at 754-4338, extension 1337, or email jcrichton at bcswan.net. That's all the time we have for tonight, but you can read all these stories and much more in this week's Beacon. If you have comments or suggestions for us at Brunswick Beat, you can email us at brunswickbeat at brunswickbeacon.com. Don't forget to follow The Beacon on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for Brunswick Beacon. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to tune in next week for a brand new edition of Brunswick Beat, Brunswick County's only television news show. We close out this week's show with more images from the Oyster Festival.